years I had the reputation of being like the wacky guitar guy, like playing all, all sorts of... Evan, Evan, you probably don't know <laughs> anything about my history, but like, um, you know, I, I have a couple prog records out there and most of my solos are kind of atonal weird solos and, uh, cool. you know, close to a decade ago, I won a guitar solo contest that was like... Whoa! Yeah, man, guitar solo contest. Here we go. Guitar solo contest. Where? Like, what? What guitar? It was like it was like a it was a YouTube thing that hosted by Manus Manus Guitars and uh, Seymour Duncan, and um, you know, what was the guitars? The guitars. What? The Manus. I have one over here. Oh, okay. Unpack it, Manus. I I don't know. I don't even know who uses their stuff besides like you know. There's got to be, I think, Limp Bizkit maybe at some point. I don't know. I have no idea. But um, oh, yeah, cool. I had I had like the weird guitar solo entry, but somehow that was the one that won. So I had this reputation of being, oh, whatever, Nick solos. It's just weird, wacky out <laughs> solo. Um, and what's funny now is that pretty much all the content I'm putting on my Instagram account is like me playing like straight ahead George Benson and nice you know just really at, at like half the speed of the recording just really getting in touch with the sound of the the melodies and the guitar and the amp and and things i mean even i, have, I can I have, dig that that's cool that's cool yeah i had a i had a question written down for you since well so maybe tell me a, a bit about yourself you you're doing um uh i'm a drum tech professionally now um yeah i work for rage against the machine i work for brad wilk i work for i i have worked for abe from the deftones eric bobo of cypress hill i mean i've been teching since oof, i mean my first tour was in 1999 which was which was a lot of fun when i was 17 years old okay. and I was on the Warp Tour of that year, and we also did Woodstock '99, um, which was which was insane for a 17 year old. It was fantastic. Like my mom wouldn't let me go on tour, but a friend of the family um, was on this Jimi Hendrix Experience tour, right? Like it was a, a traveling museum, and they would sell merchandise and try to like. Uh, like, you know, when you go to like a, a festival and they have like those vendors there, I was the guy who would like set up one of those vendors and it'd be like an experience that you walk through and they had like a 3D sound booth where you like put these headphones on, and listen to Jimi Hendrix and stuff. So uh, my mom trusted Dave and Dave's like, don't worry, I'll take care of him. I'll take care of him. And she's like, OK, I guess you. And I'm like, later. <laughs> I'm like, bye, mom. <laughs> I'm going on tour. Shit. And uh, yeah, I never looked back. And you know, there was there was something that was always calling to me. I come from a music family of uh, rec recording engineers and producers. Um, I tried the recording engineer uh, lifestyle right after high school, um, but it really wasn't it wasn't for me. I love what my dad did. I love what my uncle did. I love and, and do. Um, I love everything about it. I, I think I'm in love with the recording process, but there's something about it that I kind of felt like I wanted to, to do my own thing because every time I went into the studio, because of how successful my family was, they would always ask me about them. They'd be like, oh, what would your dad do? You know, what, how did your dad get like the John Bonham, like drum sound? I'd be like, well, well let's just call him, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and so they never really, I just, you know, there's, to me, there's two worlds when it comes to music, there's recording and then there's live, you know, they coincide and, and they're, um, they're the same, you know, you have to do both, right? Every, you know, I don't think there's very many artists that don't have albums or vice versa, but, you know, the Beatles stopped doing live music, but they, you know, and they only did recording, but for the most part, uh, everybody has a, a record and they perform it live. And so it really does take two different kinds of uh, entities to do to do both like the guy who records the band doesn't uh you know do the live part and so i wanted to i wanted to go towards live and i just went on tour and and jumped right in and yeah. and i've been teching ever since you know so touring that, the world is that mostly what i find really interesting is i i went to school for music for for performance so mm -hmm. that was all about you know get as good as you can and maybe you know some jazz guy will ask you to sideman for his 
band full time. That was like the sure, thing. sure, you sure. Know, like if you're going, to, and I went to school for jazz, so you know, okay, get really good at get, get really good at playing tunes, and you'll be the guy that you know, um, you know, everyone in New York is calling to play their to play their their gigs, and you can live this side man. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where'd you go to school? Style. I went to SUNY Purchase in uh, Westchester, New York. It's okay. it's a couple miles north of Manhattan, but it's a real it's a real contender. I mean, it was. I don't know how it's doing anymore, but in terms of um, you know jazz programs, it was really up there and it was it was awesome. But what I find interesting now, years later, is that um, for the guys that music didn't really pan out for them, they they often ended up working in like Starbucks or something. Or I even for sure. a little while out of college worked in Barnes and Noble for a little bit. Um, but the thought of doing something besides playing the guitar never even crossed my mind. And I don't even think I don't even I don't think it even crossed a lot of my peers' mind either. You know, the idea of, well, you know, maybe I can do some kind of like some kind of live thing, some kind of road thing, some kind of tech thing. Sure, um, sure, 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 sure. You, you know, I think my, my point is, is that there's there's a, there is more flexibility career wise when it comes to music than um, that it kind of seems at first. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's interesting when you talk about like going to school to master your craft and then um, expecting to go straight into a career. You know, it, the thing about music is that it's not like any other career path. You know what I mean? It's still like you think about it. It's still a really, really, really young business, right? Like the music business is, has hasn't been around that long. Now you think about music when like Mozart was like writing music and, and stuff like that, they weren't selling it, right? They weren't selling records at that time. So the record business, which has been the main fulcrum for the music business, um, you know, since the record business started, it's only been around what, like hundred years, you know, give or tape. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you look at like architecture, architecture has been around for a very long time, right? And, and politics or, or, the, uh, like like medicine, like all these things have been around for a very long time. The record business has been around for like, you know, and so we're still figuring it out and, 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 and it's ever evolving, right? So whatever is good today is going to be completely different 10 years from now. And it's, it's, it's evolving as the technology evolves and, and, and it's, um, you know, there's still, you look at the record business and the way that they like screw artists, it's because, you know, the people who were in charge wanted all the money and they basically been rip ripping off the artists ever since. And the artists are now kind of figuring it out and they're doing it on their own. And the technology allows them to do such a thing because you can literally promote yourself um, yeah. via Instagram and YouTube and all this stuff where you don't need a larger entity. You just need their checkbook. Um, but with the ever growing, uh, music business and different avenues and stuff like that. <clears throat> My dad always told me that you just need to like jump right in. You know what I mean? Um, and I really, 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 really wanted to go to college. I wanted to go to college for music, especially recording. Um, and my dad wouldn't let me, you know, he's like, you just got to jump right in. Just gotta, you just, just got to go. Do just yeah. got to do it. Go. He's like, go get a gig at a recording studio, yeah. you know? And, and sure, you'll be answering phones and 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 like wrapping, you know, mic cables and, and probably like vacuuming the floors and stuff. But you'll be in it, you'll be around it, and they'll be paying you to teach you how to do the job, you know. And yeah, and same could be said for for at least jazz performance. I don't know what the classical world is like. Maybe you know, I don't know. Like the New York Philharmonic is a is a nonprofit org organization that makes a boatload of money. You know, maybe if you go to sure, yeah. classical, you can build some kind of network that can get you in that kind of seat. But I mean, yeah, if if I came from a, from a, a musical family, especially a jazz one, and I said, "Hey, I want to go to jazz school," they probably would have said, "Like, why? Just go get a gig at the <laughs> go get a gig at the restaurant. Go, you know, call up this guy to see if he, you know, can give you ten lessons, and then." You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, that's interesting. Do you think the um, the DIY stuff that's available now is as good as the non DIY route? Like, I, I had this thought today. Um, mm. Like, if I had unlimited money, would it make a difference to record an album 
in the most amazing studio uh or 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 is 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 what's available to me from home just as good these days um i mean you know i could i could take the easy way out of that answer and say like it depends on what you're doing right um you know with that said a lot of it is a lot of it today like a lot of the music you hear today um is done <laughs> at a you know if, if you want to say uh do it yourself uh aspect you know where they literally just set up a recording studio anywhere you know they, they set up a recording studio with a laptop some interface and some cool mics on a beach or in the mountains or, or whatever you know whereas you couldn't you literally could not do that um my my dad uh had done a few albums one was um excel on main street and then Led Zeppelin four, where they brought a mobile unit, right? Uh, the Stones had this mobile unit and they would drive it to a house and they would set up a studio in a house, you know? And this was like, wow, you know, right? Um, but I mean, mobile units have been around for, for a while, but today you can literally do it on a laptop. Like you can fit it in your backpack, right? Mm -hmm. um, would I, which, which one do you prefer? Which one is going to inspire you? Which one is going to, uh, you know, service the song in a way that you're going to get the results that you want. And sometimes it takes someone to go to a comfortable place to do so. But yeah, with the, with the, with the way technology is going, you can press a few buttons and you can get the sound, the room sound from ocean way, or, you know what I mean? You can, you can just yeah. press a few buttons and it's like, you have some crazy like, and and then they're getting really good. <laughs> they're getting really good with that. Yeah, you and know, again, some again, of these... and again, it's just the beginning. And also, I feel like the budget backing a lot of these things are probably not that high. It's probably I don't really know that for sure, but I kind of feel like a lot of these <laughs> software instruments and um, you know plugins that are available now are, are 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 a lot of passion projects or you know. Maybe they haven't made their full money back yet on the investment to to make the most perfect, uh, you know, software guitar tone. I, I, you know, I don't really. Well, as a guitar player, I mean, I'd love to ask you, like, what do you think of these Kempers and Fractals? And you know, I I don't like to play them. You really um, don't. No, I really don't. I I um, if 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 I walked into some place and someone was like i set this thing up perfectly all you got to do is sit in that chair and here's the guitar and i yeah. played it and it felt good then i then i could be happy the th i you know i only have so much mental bandwidth and so f for me you know i i'm just a guitar player you know at the end of the day I, I like to play the guitar and i like to write music i don't like to sit there um you know tweaking with the i do it out of necessity but i really don't enjoy um playing with like like soft digital software guitar tones. It just doesn't feel good in my soul. It doesn't feel good in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. There's something about, um, you touching it, feeling it right. And, and, and like that it's, I don't like using a mouse or a trackpad, right? It just, it's yeah. like, it takes me out of it. It takes me out of it and I can't connect almost. Yeah. That's, why, that's why I'm a drummer. The, rec the recording process for me is, is really challenging you know, cause I, I, I work from home in this room. I practice on that couch back there. I record from this very same spot. So, um, you know, to get into a headspace where, okay, this is no longer, you know, spot a, it's now spot C is, is really challenging. Um, and, uh, there's, uh, you ever heard of cognitive dissonance that, uh, that phrase, yeah. I don't know, it comes from, maybe it comes from marketing, but like, you know, you go to the supermarket and you see a wall of ketchups and it's like, oh, curry ketchup and that ketchup and this guy's ketchup and organic ketchup. And it's like, fuck, all I, I just wanted ketchup. If, if I just closed my eyes and grabbed <laughs> and grabbed one, I'm sure it would be fine. But that's, that's what I feel when I, when I, um, am often, you know, recording, uh, yeah, yeah, know, yeah. producing and engineering myself from home. It just, I feel like that. Uh, yeah, analysis paralysis, overwhelming cognitive dissonance, and I've they got eight thousand guitar amps and guitar tones, and it's like fuck, you know. I just really wish I just had, you know, one or two amps and I could figure it out and play with it, and play with it from there. 
No, that's, you're absolutely right. I, I love that. Yeah. I love that. And it's so funny because like you grab like a ketchup after closing your eyes and you're like, you your ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then like you use it, but then you add a little thing. You're like, it just needs more salt. And then this and you're like, dude, you guys are you guys got to try my burger. You have to look, don't like I know it's root beer ketchup. OK, just chill. Just just, just just close your eyes. And they're like, wow, how'd you come up with this? Well, I was just fucking around and blah, 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 you know? Yeah, I mean. But that's my story. There's, there's, there's people that I know for sure love it. Like they love working, you know, they love working that yeah. way. I, I've, I've just been watching this, this, I think it's a new series out on Netflix. I mean, it's called Chef's Table. I think Chef's Table has a bunch of different um Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, was, I saw that the other day and I, I was trying to look into it, see what I can, see if I would dig it. Yeah, the, the pizza one is really cool. I think the pizza one just came out, and anything um, with pizza, sign me up. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, and this it, this is great. Uh, of course, all sorts of slow mo montage things of pizzas coming in and out of ovens. That's always good. <laughs> but <laughs> but the um, but the real the real thing that I've that has stuck with me with uh, every episode. I've seen two episodes, so both episodes I've seen so far are that these guys they preach going to you know going to the the wheat farm and and getting the very very best wheat and then like touching the wheat and 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 you know <laughs> and then like that's you code know, right that's code for something <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs>